today we're going to get into what is an accredited investor, why you would like to be one, and also what makes your company an accredited investor if you wanted to invest through an entity. So let's jump right into it. Here in the U.S. is what I'm going to speak to. If you reside in a different jurisdiction, Japan, UK, Canada, Australia, there are going to be different requirements as an individual and probably as a business that you need to meet in order to be accredited and be able to make private investment and be involved in those areas. So just go ahead and Google what that is in your area, but I'm going to speak to people here in the U.S. So here in the U.S., you're going to have to make over $200,000 a year if you're single, $300,000 a year if you are married for the past two years on your tax returns. The second way, well, so there's three ways you can be accredited as an individual and also as a business. Uh, the second way as an individual is you can have over $1 million in net worth outside of your primary residence. So it cannot include the equity in your house. And the last way here in the U.S. is you can take and pass your Series 65 and become sponsored by a broker. And so if you do that, you're going to have to be compliant with the fin with FINRA and the SEC. You're going to have to disclose investments. And you're going to have to keep up with all the compliance that's involved with that in order to retain your accredited status. So it's a lot easier if you just make a lot of money. <laughs> and that's, you know, uh, people have their feelings about that, but we'll, we'll get into that on the back half of this video. Uh, just to get into the business side of things, what does it take for your business to be accredited? Well, you can have $5 million of assets under management within your business. All of the people, so that's the first way. The second way is all of the people or members on your cap table uh, can all be accredited. Then you meet the accredited requirements. And then lastly, you can be a BDC. What What is a BDC? A BDC is a business development company. So that means they invest in other companies that have a market cap or their market valuation of less than 250 million. So they're trying to help small corporations, they're gonna put capital on them, they're gonna buy equity, they're gonna help business development, right? Uh, and they have to do that with more than 70% of their investments out of the BDC. A lot of times they are publicly traded, so this is a great way for um, retail investors to get exposure to private investment. If you wanted to get into uh, invest in a BDC that's publicly traded, they're going to be investing in companies that are pi private and and going to try to help them scale. Um, and then hopefully they'll sell some of their equity in those companies and uh, you get a nice bump in the valuation of your BDC. So, and there's there's a lot of compliance that's involved with that. They, they're they the same way as like the Series 65. You're going to have to register with FINRA and the SEC. You're going to have to fill out all the forms associated with that. Uh, there's a lot of legal and regulatory hoops that you need to jump through in order to be compliant and make sure that you're doing that correctly. So just keep that in mind if that's something that you're interested in. So why would you want to be accredited either through uh, your entity that you've set up, a business that you've set up, or as an individual? Well, uh, this allows you to participate in private investments. So because you have more capital, um, <laughs> It doesn't necessarily mean you know how to invest. It just knows, means you know how to make money and, and hopefully manage money a little bit better than somebody else that doesn't have the capital in order to meet the qualifications. So uh, because of that and because of the high risks that are involved with private investments, the SEC issued guidance back in the 1930s that said, you know, in order to participate uh, in this type of stuff, you need to meet these requirements. And since then, the little guy has kind of been left out in the rain and the cold and not been able to participate in private investments, which honestly is is the fastest way to accumulate wealth. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of risk involved, but there's a lot of upside, right? Low risk, low reward, high risk, high reward. So when you're investing in private equity or real estate deals or um, could be M&A and roll-ups, um, if you're putting cash into those types of investments, then you can see significant upside. And so that's where the wealthy invest. And it's kind of a monopoly at this point because to meet the qualifications that are required for you to make those investments, you also have to start with some money uh, or meet the, the specifications that I mentioned before. So it's kind of a racket. 
Um, I'm hopeful that maybe they come out with a different option than the Series 65 uh, in my lifetime that allows people to, you know, show that they are a sophisticated investor and that they understand how to allocate capital. Um, Series 65 has a lot more compliance on it than it does, you know, how to actually make money or use money to make money. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Uh, if you're looking to get into private investments, just understand that through the majority of options that exist out there, you're going to have to be accredited. I will say, soft plug here, if you want to get into the mastermind, we do offer private investments to sophisticated retail investors through our group and the mastermind because we have a pre-existing business relationship with you. We're allowed to evolve up to 35 of the participants in our mastermind and a lot of the investments that they have in that group. And um, if that's something that you'd be interested in, we'd love to have you just friend me on LinkedIn and we can have a conversation there. But until then, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.